and then move into the presentation mode. So you just give me a sign when you see that one. Yep, all good. OK, good. And let me get started. So good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Urdu Hindi Bootcamp 2021. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, being part of this uh, great community. Yeah. So also from my side, a heartily welcome to this session and this event. So um, in this session, I will talk about electronic reporting um, and, and try to give you some tips and tricks yeah, from what I experience in some of the projects that I'm operating in. Yeah? Before we jump into details, um, just a little bit background for myself. If you have questions later on, or if you want to contact me, I'm a, a consultant uh, working for SA Global Germany. Um, my interests are in the Dynamics 365 uh, finance and operations area. I like electronic reporting, projects, sustainability, and many other things. So if you have similar interests or if you have questions later on, feel free to contact me anytime via this email. OK, but today um, I have uh, four bullet points in my agenda for you. So the first one is I will try to give you an introduction into electronic reporting. So here we have a quick look at what is electronic reporting and what is the focus of this session here. Then the next bullet point is about tax group reporting. That's something you might have heard. Um, and I will try to explain you the um, background and how you can use it. Then we will have a look at earned value analysis. And then there's a session for question and answers. Yeah? OK, so let's get started with an introduction into electronic reporting. So what is electronic reporting? Well, if you open your Dynamics 365, uh, for finance and operations machine, then you typically see um, two workspaces. One is called business document management and the other one is electronic reporting. Yeah? And they're kind of related, but let's have a look first. So first, the first one, the business document management, this one deals with the design and management of business document. And all of that is without coding. So it's a similar approach to what you have heard possibly from the Power Platform um, sessions here, either yesterday or today and tomorrow. Yeah? It's a low code, no code approach. On the right hand side, we have the electronic reporting workspace that I mentioned. And this one is often used, um, well, let's say to comply with legal regulations. So when it comes about value added tax statements, payment file formats, bank file formats, then you often end up in this electronic reporting workspace. Yeah? And of course, these two workspaces and functionalities are related to, it, to each other. Yeah? So um, the business document management um, is technically a part of this electronic reporting, but of course, nicer for the users to handle and use in practice. So if you open that in Dynamics, you will see on the left hand side uh, a graphical designer that helps you to design your documents that can be invoices, can be any kind of documents in Dynamics that we have. Yeah? And it's really easy to use. So if you can handle Excel, then you can get started with that. On the right hand side, we have the electronic reporting workspace, which is a bit more complex. Yeah? And there you can do some other configurations. Yeah? What we are not going to cover is the left um, workspace. Why is that? Well, there are a lot of great presenters that will talk about that. So if you have time, join, for example, the, the session of Sukrut or Suhair. And I hope I did not forget anybody who is um, doing a presentation about this. So there are other great presentations focusing on the business document management. What we are focusing on today is um, the electronic reporting workspace. And here I try to use it in a way that um, I don't simply export data or 
I, I use file formats that Microsoft gives us. But the idea is, hey, there is a problem. And what I can do with electronic reporting is to bridge specific gaps in, in the system that we have huh? and to close it. So it's a kind of, I would say, a power platform-like tool that helps us to overcome hurdles and to automate processes within Dynamics 365 FNO. So I have some examples here. So in the past, I used it for something like inventory write-offs. Yeah? When it comes to, to um, reevaluating your inventory based, for example, on the inventory turn or something, then you can use this tool. Yeah? Um, I also use it for free text invoicing, for text group reporting and earn value management. And that's what I want to show you in the next half hour or so. So let's get started with text group reporting. Yeah? And why is that an issue that requires um, electronic reporting? Here, a short introduction. And this is based on my home country and the home area where I live, the European Union. And here we have a regulation that says, okay, if two or more companies are um, um, kind of integrated in a financial, economic, and organizational manner, then these companies automatically establish a tax group. Yeah? So you cannot choose. You cannot say, okay, I'm not integrated with the other company. It's just a matter of fact that the tax officer defines. Yeah? So you cannot opt in or opt out. Yeah? And this has an important consequence or result. The consequence is that you have to submit a single consolidated tax report to the tax office if the tax officer says you establish such a, such a tax group. Yeah? Okay, and the rules that I mentioned to you, they apply in Germany. We have rules in Ireland, in similar in the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and so on. Yeah, so what I show you applies to a couple of countries. And here's my example that I have. So let me share that here and explain it a bit. So on the right-hand side, you can see um, the flag of Germany with three companies. I have a mother company, I have a daughter company, A, B, and then we have a company C in France. Yeah? The tax group is basically established in Germany. And as a result um, of this tax group is that transactions between the mother company and the daughters inside of Germany, um, they are non taxable. On the other hand side, if there's a transaction going on between the, a daughter company in Germany and the French company, then this one is taxable, but possibly tax free. Huh? So that's the landscape, so to say. And what we are focusing on is the, are the three companies in Germany. Huh? So they establish what I call a tax group. Uh, so what is the consequence uh, of this tax group? Well, if we do not have a tax group, then each of these companies have to submit the individual um, tax report to the tax office. But now, if we have the tax group established, then we need to consolidate and uh, submit the single report to the tax office. And this has two main effects uh, that we need to consider inside of Dynamics. The first one is we need to consolidate taxes. And the other thing is, these are the, the black lines here. We need to post intercompany payable and receivable transactions. So it's not just combining things in a report. We also need the vouchers and the accounting for that. Uh. So then the question is, of course, hey, how can we do that? Uh. And here's the, the process that I want to demonstrate you in the following. Yeah? So the process starts in the upper left-hand corner where we record transactions, we post and settle sales tax, and then we run an electronic report. So the third step is the crucial one here. Yeah? Then we take this electronic report and have an automatic import in the mother company that creates a journal for us that we post and then submit our tax transactions. Yeah? So this process is the one that I want to show you. And for that reason, um, let me try to um, switch into my demo system. 
um, that I share with you. So let me refresh the, the session here and then um, show you the different companies that I have. So here, I basically work with three companies. Um, one of them is called DEU for Deutschland, one, two, and O for the mother company. Yeah? And to keep things as simple as, as possible, I will record things only in this, in this uh, single company, so in one of the daughter companies, to illustrate you the concept. Yeah? Um, because the approach is always the same. Yeah? This company is basically uh, a copy of the DEMF company. So if you want to replicate things that I show you here, just take the DEMF and make a copy so that your colleagues can still um, use uh, all of the, the standard companies in Dynamics. But let me have uh, show you what, what I changed. There's actually only one single major change that I make, and this is in the sales tax authorities. So later on, when we record and post taxes, I have here an intercompany vendor account that I set up. Yeah? And this one is critical because this one will hold our intercompany accounts payable and receivable transactions. Okay. And then the other things are really standard. So I use the standard sales tax code, the sales tax groups, and everything else. Yeah? Okay, now um, to, to demonstrate you the, the, the transactions for this ta sales tax group, I prepared a couple of transactions in a period where I do not have transactions. Yeah? Otherwise, there would be so many postings and you might get confused. So what I prepared here is I prepared some vendor invoices and then later we have customer invoices that I want to post in a specific period yeah? so that we can then run the tax reports. Yeah? So what I prepared um, is here a, a journal, and this one has only a single line so that we can easily follow this up. This one is an invoice from a company. I posted in March 2022. So don't be confused if I post something in the future. That is only because I want that um, we can really follow up the data. Yeah? The invoice amount is 238. And if you're good in mathematics, you will quickly find out that with the German value at the tax of 90%, the sales tax that we will, in this case, receive from the tax office is 38. Yeah? We are in a VAT system, in a value at the tax system. So for vendor invoices that we receive, we pay 38 um, that, that we get back, that we get a refund. Yeah? So let me post that one. And then the next step after posting this transaction is, of course, we also want to send invoices out to our customers. Yeah? For that one, I prepared a simple invoice. Yeah? Um, that's this one. It's a free text invoice, of course, to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah? Um, and again, here we have a tax on top of the $2,000. So the tax, if I open that, is 2,000 times 19% here, 380. That's what we have to pay. Yeah? So if I post this tax or this invoice, there will be a tax posting. Yeah? And then we can report this to our tax authority. OK, so the processes for the other invoices would be the same. So usually over the, the course of a month, uh, you have additional invoices, transactions, and so on. But at the end of the month, we usually go into our tax module. And then we have here settlement and posting of the sales tax. And that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to do that for March 2022. So let me jump there. So the period here starts 1st of March. And I'm doing a monthly tax reporting. Yeah. Um, if I hit OK, then I will get two things. The first thing is a report. That's just for information. I don't need this report. But what I need are the text postings behind. And let me show you that. So we have here sales tax payments. And if I scroll down, at the bottom you can see 
the one that I made for March. And if I click on the voucher, you can see a couple of things. So let me scroll to the right. You see that I have a receivable and that I have a wet payable. Huh? That's based on the invoices that I recorded. I have a rounding difference, but that doesn't matter. But the important thing here is on top. This is the intercompany um, payable or receivable account against our mother company. Yeah? So I have here the accounting done for my mother company. And uh, this small daughter company is then completed with the tax report that it has to do. Okay. So then the next step would be, of course, how can we get this data into our mother company so that we can report it to the tax office? Yeah? That's the big question. And to realize that I created an electronic report. So let me quickly show that to you. Um, there's nothing magical behind that. It basically just extracts the data uh, from a single um, from a single data source. And the data source, this is something all of you know, this is the text trends. So I take the text trends table, group the records, and then I'm ready to export them. Huh? And actually, no user has to come in here. Why? Well, because you can automate the whole process. Yeah? I need to do that manually because this is a demo machine that is not running all the time yeah? and I'm shutting it down sometimes. But what I can do is I can run this export process that I show you um, in, in a second. I can run it in a regular basis based on a batch process. So for example, I can run this process um, on the fifth of every month when I'm finished with my um, reporting and, and calculations. Yeah? And then the other thing is you need to define a date range. Yeah? I'm doing this manually here. Yeah? So I enter here, um, 1st of March until 31st of March, 22. Yeah? But if you know um, the standard filter and query language of dynamics, you know that you can define a date range here so that you do not have to do that. Yeah? Um, so all what I'm doing here is more or less for demonstration purposes. Yeah? But the important key here is in the middle, the destination that puts this report on um, SharePoint. So this process runs and generates a file on a SharePoint drive. And this SharePoint file will then be grabbed by another import process which is importing the transactions into the mother company. So let me switch to that one. That is our um, yeah, consolidated company, so to say, that is doing the tax group reporting for us. Yeah? And what I'm doing here is the following. I have an import generated into a general ledger journal. So at the moment, there is nothing here. Why is that? Because, well, the batch import process runs, I would say, every two, three minutes. So that's the time we have to wait until this um, file is generated. So let's refresh it. Yeah. So now you can see here is the file. And inside are the, the results of our electronic report. Yeah. All of the data that you see inside here, they come from the electronic report. So either incoming or outgoing tax. And then here on the right hand side, you can see the item sales tax group and sales tax group that I use to post it. So I summarize and post the different transactions that I have. And also here, I use separate intercompany accounts. Yeah? These are two intercompany accounts that I use and that give me either the receivable or the payable from the perspective of the mother company. Yeah? So if I post this journal, I get two things. Number one is the intercompany payable or receivable. And number two is I get the tax transactions posted. And this allows me then to run the consolidated tax report. Yeah? Because you have to imagine that I get all of these journals created by the different um, daughter companies that I have. Yeah? So I do not have only one, but 
two, three, four, or five, probably. And so once they are posted, I can come in here and then do the consolidated text reporting, just as you do it in the standard text module. Yeah. So here in this text module, my sales text authority is actually my, what is called here, Finanzamt Berlin. This is the tax office in Berlin. This is a normal vendor. Yeah. And when I come here and then settle and post the sales tax for March um, 2022, yeah, if I'm doing that and hit OK, and again, OK, I get the report. So that's the consolidated report from the mother's company's perspective. And it includes here the numbers that I uh, recorded actually in the other company. Yeah. Um, so this is the report I can submit to my tax office uh, in Berlin in this case. And then also, if we look at the sales tax payments, we have here the voucher generated that cleans the tax accounts at the mother company level and then posts a liability against the finance and Berlin. So if we click on transaction origin, you can see here, that's actually what we want to achieve. Yeah. And this was the process just in a nutshell. Yeah. So the key here is that with electronic reporting, you can, you can kind of realize this consolidated tax reporting because this is something we do not have in the standard application. But with a simple export and import of transactions, you can achieve all of that. Yeah. So let me go back to my uh, presentation then to have a quick summary of the first um, yeah, example that we investigated. So the main advantage that, that I can see is what I said, electronic reporting is a standard tool. Yeah? There is a low code, no code approach. It's really just knowing where to extract the data. It works out of the box with SharePoint, Excel and so on. And it can help you to find a workaround and save you a lot of time and money compared to making system adjustments. Huh? Because the, the example that I showed you, I've seen a couple of implementations where companies adjusted that um, and spend a lot of money. But with electronic reporting, you can do that out of the box. Okay, then that was the first example that I had for you. Another example is what I call earn value management. Uh, this is also something that you might experience in, uh, in practice. And it's just another idea uh, that, that should give you a kind of impression what can be done with this electronic reporting and how powerful this tool is. Yeah? So let me give you the background here. And the problem that, that you see, if you work with the standard Dynamics 365 project module, um, is that it does not ship with an out-of-the-box earned value analysis tool. Yeah? It doesn't matter whether you use the um, project operations um, project module or whether you use the one that is the part of um, the finance and operation project module. There is no out-of-the-box earned value report or analysis tool available. Well, there are some workarounds possible. Yeah? One of the workarounds is you can modify the standard posting logic. So if you tweak around the accounting, you can kind of realize a kind of earned value posting, I would say. Yeah? That is one possibility. The other one is you can, of course, use BI. Yeah? But I said, OK, um, if you use the first workaround to modify the standard posting logic, then nobody will understand this kind of accounting. Yeah? Maybe an accountant will understand what you're doing, but if you show this to a project manager, then he will say, hey, man, I don't get the point. Yeah? So the first workaround is one that I would not recommend. Of course, you can use BI, but many times when you start with a with an ERP implementation, either you do not have the, the necessary special BI knowledge, Maybe you do not know all the data sources um, that you need, 
or you just need to establish these reports. Huh? And that's where I say, okay, here's a, a field where also electronic reporting might help to create a solution. Yeah. So, and what I want to achieve is just illustrated in this picture here. This is taken from um, Wikipedia. So if you search for um, earn value management, you will certainly find this kind of graph. Yeah. And that's what I want to get out of dynamics. That's the, the main idea that I want to achieve. Yeah. And again, here, the process stream that I have for you is, is uh, similar to what I showed you before. So first of all, we record transactions. Then we run an electronic report. And this time, I enrich the report with some analytical tools that we can use then to analyze our, our data, our earned value, our schedule variance, our cost variance. Huh? And of course, this is also something I would like to show you in my system. So let's go back. And this time, I'm going into the USSI demo company. Yeah? USSI, this is something you have in every demo machine. And um, that's why I choose it, because it has a very good uh, project management and accounting setup. Yeah? Also, here we will make a simple example that everybody can, can hopefully follow. So I'm, I'm navigating here in project management and accounting, and I open all of the projects that I have. Yeah? And to keep the example clean and straightforward, I will, I will start from scratch. Yeah? So let me create a brand new project. I call it uh, project 380. The project group, it doesn't really matter what I have. Yeah? I just select the first one, and the same applies here for the customer, the funding source. I just select the first one, and then I say, okay, I want to create this project. Okay, so that's the first point. Next thing is, okay, if we talk about earned value management, we need a benchmark, we need a budget. Yeah? And to set up this budget in a very fast way, I just import things. So I take here the import, of a uh, work breakdown structure. Yeah, I choose the one that is very light so that we can see the data um, and do not get confused with thousands of lines. So if I show you the lines, we have only three. Yeah? So we have some, some lines about project management, development, and quality assurance. And just note that the calendars in my environment are set up in a way that it notice today is a, a weekend. Uh, and there is no working day, but let us change that. I uh, want that we start already in July so that you can see how the budget is spread over different months. Yeah? So I started here, this, I set the start date to um, end of July, and then we have data um, in different periods. Yeah? Of course, here you see the scheduling part. There's also a cost estimate part. And if you look at this, then you can see, okay, the total expected cost of this project is around $112,800. So that's what I want to have as my budget. So I publish that. And then the next step would be to copy this work breakdown structure into my budget. Yeah? So this is also a standard process. I am clicking here, I say, I want to import my work breakdown structure estimates into the budget and I select here a different forecast model. Will be important later on when we analyze the data. So let me hit OK here. What happens is the data are imported and if you scroll down, you can see here the total original budget amount that we saw. Now the next step would be to submit this into the workflow and then just wait until the workflow is completed. Yeah? Another thing that happened in the background is that the project budget was copied into the forecast. So if you open the forecast, you can see here the original forecast model that I have, and that will be important. Yeah? So now I'm basically ready to go. I can now record transactions for my project. Yeah? And to do that, I need to change the project stage. 
So let me switch that to released. And then I can record, let's say, some hours. I can also record expenses and item transactions. But let's keep it easy so that we can calculate and see the data that we have. Yeah? So let's say I just record some hours for project management. And to keep it as simple as possible, I, I record 30 hours. The total quantity is 600, 30 hours should be easy to calculate is 5%. Yeah? So if I post that, then we get a voucher created, and then we can also check the progress of our project. Yeah? So the voucher can be found in the posted transactions. There you just see a kind of accounting-like um, result with some um, dollar values. Yeah? But what I'm interested in is, how is the project doing? Uh, and for that reason, we have the tracking views. Uh, and if I show you the tracking views, you will see two different forms. One that shows the monetary side. And here you can see, okay, I spent $6,000 um, for project management. But there's also a effort tracking view that shows you the time perspective. So we basically used a couple of hours, 30 hours from a total of 600. And then you can see, okay, the planned effort um, in total was 600. We used 30 hours, so the remaining effort is 570. Yeah? And um, if you overshoot, if you post too many, you can see variances. Yeah, So you can see an effort variance. But this form alone does not tell you how is the project doing? Are you good? Are you ahead of the schedule? Do you Are your costs too high or too low? Yeah. So what's going on here? Uh, is this good or bad? Uh, and for that reason, we have what is called an earned value tool usually um, that gives us this, this output. Yeah? In Dynamics, we don't have this um, earned value um, report. What goes into this direction is the cost control. So let me quickly show you that, then we can compare the data. So if I calculate here the data for the overall project, you see here at the bottom what is called a variance based on quantity and on the price. Yeah? And this one gives you an indication. OK, there might be something wrong. I might be too fast or too slow. Yeah? But this, this form is kind of averaging data and only looks at the hours data. So it does not apply to all of the transactions that you have. And that's why I created here in organization administration in the electronic reporting workspace, another electronic report. I call it EVM. Yeah? And in the setup, I will just, I can just give you a glimpse yeah? um, how this is designed. And it basically makes use of two tables. One is the project trans posting cube, and the other one is the project trans budget cube. It's not a cube, it's basically a table that is automatically filled. So there's no processing or something behind. Yeah. And then if you have this set up, and I can share that with you if you want, then you can run the report either manually yeah, or on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, you can run the report for all of your projects, or you can run it for a specific one. And I tested this this morning yeah, with a similar project. So I selected this one that we can focus really on the example. And the key what I have here is that we have a, a reference to the original forecast model. That will be important. So let me run the report and show you the outcome. Uh, and the outcome can be um, an email that is sent to a manager. It can be an Excel sheet that you see on the screen, like me here. Or you can put it on SharePoint and, and share it with, with other colleagues that you have. Yeah. So here you see the raw data. But what I want to share with you is this embedded pivot table. Yeah? So if you export the data and refresh it, then you can see what I recorded yeah? in a tabular manner and also in a graphical manner. And this, this kind of report shows you then, okay, what is the budget that we have for the different periods? So what is the budget for 
July, August, September, October, and whatever you have, what are the actual costs and what is the percentage of completion? And based on that, the electronic report can calculate for you what is the earned value, what is the cost and schedule variance. Huh? That's pretty easy because you are the master of the electronic report. You can define how the percentage of completion is calculated and how. Huh? Let us make a small variation. Huh? Let us say, okay, we have a change request. The customer wants to have a change. So what we can do is we can go back into our um, Dynamics application and then implement this change request from, from a planning perspective. Huh? So let me go back to my project and then implement this change request. And to keep things easy and uh, straightforward, I'm doing this in a way that I adjust my work breakdown structure, just to because it allows me to copy things quickly. Yeah? There are many ways how you can implement change requests. I just show you one of them. Yeah? So let's say um, here we have another task. Yeah? The customer asks for some additional training, let's say. Yeah? Let's say um, 50 hours maybe. And the training must be done after the quality assurance is, is completed. So with this change, if I publish that, we have now 650 hours. And from a monetary perspective, um, the costs increased from 112,000 to 122,000. So it's 10,000 more. It's pretty easy to follow up this number. And then the next thing that you do is we need to show the system also from a budget um, perspective that there is a change. And to do that, we have here in the budgeting functionality, a feature that allows us to implement a change request. So this is the first change request that we are doing. Huh? And what allows this, this feature allows me to do is I can say, okay, I import it again from my work breakdown structure, but this time, and that's important, I use the total forecast model. So let's import that and say, yes. And then you see the change here already. The difference is 10,000. And if you scroll down, the new total budget is 122,000. So what we're doing here is we just send it into the workflow, submit it, and then wait for the workflow to complete. Okay, so that's it from a monetary or budget perspective, what we have to do. Also here, a small hint, in the forecast form, we now see here the four different lines um, that give us this new um, budget amount, because that's important, because that's now our new benchmark. Yeah? So you can run your earned value analysis against the original one or against the adjusted one. Yeah? And the way how to do that is easy. Yeah? If we go back to our electronic port, yeah? Then we are here again, we can run it. And this time I either create a second report, a copy of that, uh, or you can simply change the filter uh, and then switch over to the total forecast model. And if you run the report with this configuration, uh, then you can get a different outcome. So let me enable the editing and then go to my screen here and refresh the data. And then you see here the additional line that we have, the different percentage of completion that we have and a different benchmark. So now our benchmark is not the original budget, so to say, but the adjusted one. And that is all your decision. So you can decide hey, what is the earned value calculation? What is my benchmark against I want to compare? You can either, even create multiple of these charts and say, okay, I have a sheet that compares my percentage of completion and the earned value calculation and does the cost and schedule variance calculation against my original benchmark, the original budget, or against an adjusted one. So this is all a kind of flexibility that you did you get with this out of the box um, just by making use of this electronic reporting 
functionality. Yeah? So I can see really a lot of potential, not only for this kind of analysis, but for many others in a, in a very simple way um, that does not require coding or adjustments. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Yeah? Just another example, another application that or a gap in the system that can be closed by electronic reporting. So let me go back to my PowerPoint for some closing remarks that I have. Yeah. So if we take a step back uh, and look at the, the examples that we see here, again, I would say electronic reporting is a standard tool that helps us or can help us bridging system gaps and complete processes and automate processes wherever you want. Huh? It integrates nicely with Excel, PDF, SharePoint, emails, basically whatever you want huh? in a kind of low code, no code manner. And it gives you a kind of flexibility um, that let you be the master of the data and analyze it in a way that you want. Huh? So it doesn't matter if you want to compare the data against your original budget, a change budget, or some kind of forecast, um, that's all your choice um, that you have. Okay, so that's it basically what I wanted to share with you.